This lesson is on setting the view screen, part one, sizing the view screen from graphs. This is an image review screen. We're going to go ahead and examine how to use it in detail today. Now this is some graph paper and what your view screen is, is essentially it's electronic graph paper. Now in regular graph paper you're going to have to draw lines and you may have to draw lines again and resize. Well the beauty of using your view screen is you don't have to do that. It comes very quickly and very efficiently. Now this is an image of my digital camera. As you see highlighted here, it has 8.0 megapixels or 8 million pixels. Now a computer monitor has 1280 by 1024 resolution or about 1.3 million pixels and television NTSC format is 648 by 486 or about 300,000 pixels. Well your calculator view screen by contrast is 94 pixels wide by 62 pixels high or about 5,828 pixels total. Now why do we have this introduction about pixels and view screen size? Well the reason we do that is because on the view screen of your calculator you have a limited amount of resolution so we need to be efficient in using the small number of pixels we have when using our graphic calculator. Now the things we use to change our view screen there are, there are two areas we do that. One way we use, and we're not going to examine it in this lesson, we use the zoom menu, and particularly zoom box, and six zoom standard, and finally we're going to use zoom stat, but we're going to use those mainly in future lessons. But the one we're going to use today heavily is we're going to examine the use of the window menu, and this is the window menu, the default window menu. And on the from the default window menu, we press graph, this is our standard view screen, this is what it looks like. As you can see, we have the lowest value of x is negative 10, the highest value of x is positive 10, the lowest value of y is negative 10, the highest value of y is positive 10. And we can see the unit divisions are 1 on the x-axis and on the y-axis. Now going back to our window, we're going to go ahead and inset it into our the view screen of our calculator and take a look at what these settings on window view mean. First, negative 10, lowest value of x, is demonstrated in the x min setting. The highest value of x, or 10, is demonstrated in the x max setting. The lowest value of y, y minimum, negative 10, is in the y min setting, and the highest value of y, positive 10, is in the y max setting. We can see these unit divisions are one apart, and so on the x-axis they're one apart, and also on the y-axis, so x-scale and y-scale are one. Now we're going to take a look at what happens when we make changes to the window view. And what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and take the x-min value, and we're going to change it from negative 10 to 0. And now we're going to press graph and see what happens when we do that. What happens is it dramatically changes the dimensions of our view screen. Instead of having quadrants 1, 2, 3, 4 in a normal coordinate plane, we now have eliminated quadrants 2 and 3, and we don't have anything to the left of the y-axis. And we can see that the y-max value still is 10, the y-minimum value is still negative 10, the x-maximum value is 10, but the x-minimum value is 0, and what that does is it makes, instead of having 20 units from left to right on your view screen, you only have 10 units. And so the x values, are one apart, are greater in this view. Now we're going to go ahead to our window again, and we're going to change our y minimum value from negative 10 to 0. And when we do that and press graph, this is what we have. And we can see that we have further uh, zooming in on the window. Now we have our y minimum value 0 and we only have quadrant 1. We don't have anything below the x-axis. We don't have anything to the left of the y-axis. So it really allows us to focus in better on what is in quadrant 1 when we do our graphing. And what does the changing of the graph dimensions help us do? Well it helps us to emulate graphs and uh, better evaluate what we have. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, emulate this first graph 
this curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to inset our window view to take a look at how we're going to change it to match this graph that we're evaluating. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the X minimum. And as you can see on the graph, it's negative 2. So we change it to negative 2 on our window view. The next thing we're going to change is the X max value from 10, the standard 10, to 4. And then we're going to go ahead and we notice that the units on the x-axis are one apart and so we're going to leave x scale alone because it's already one. Now the y minimum value is negative four so we're going to change y min to negative four. And now the y maximum value is ten and our standard value is ten already so we're going to leave that alone. And finally we can see that our units are two apart and so we're going to change y scale to two to match that. And now we're going to press graph and see what it looks like. As you can see, I'm going to inset, we're going to inset the graph that we're evaluating. And the only thing you really don't see is you don't see on the original graph the axes, the x and y axis, so I drew them in here. And I was also able to determine that the equation for the graph in the original graph is y equals x squared minus 3x. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the y equals menu or function editor, and we're going to enter y1 equals x squared minus 3x. And so we press graph and we see that we have a curve that matches the graph that we're emulating. And this is a very useful tool. We're going to show in later lesson how you can go ahead and emulate the actual curve or graph uh, quite well. It's quite effective. Now we're going to go ahead and look at another graph and we're going to go ahead and, and go to our window view and we can see our window being inset here and the first thing we're going to do is change the x minimum from negative 10 to 0 and then we're going to change the x max to 7 because that's what's on the original graph and finally we can see that they're one unit, one unit apart so we leave x scale alone, we leave it at 1 and we're going to change our y minimum value to 0 to match the graph and our y maximum is going to be 70. So we change our y max to 70 and we see that our y values are 10 apart so we're going to change y scale to 10. And when we graph this is what it looks like. Now what about the horizontal lines on the graph? Well we're not going to be able to make horizontal lines but this is what we can do. We can go to second then zoom and what that does it gets us to the format menu and the format menu looks like this and we can go to highlight grid on by going to grid on and pressing enter and when we do that and graph this is what we get and what the dots represent are grid lines are the intersections of the grid lines the horizontal grid lines and the vertical grid lines and because of limited resolution of view screen, having regular lines like graph paper would take up too many pixels. But having these dots is pretty convenient in a lot of instances, and we're going to do that quite a bit in this lesson. And so what we're going to do is we're going to enter what I determined was the equation for the line of the graph, and it is 2 to the power of quantity, or in parentheses, x minus 1. And so if you enter that and graph it, this is what it's going to look like. You can see that it matches the original graph quite well. And now we're going to look at another graph. We're going to look at a graph of miles traveled versus gasoline in the tank. And so we're going to go to our window view first of all and we're going to go ahead and set our x minimum value to 0. And you notice that in these graphs we've had so far, the x minimum value is, is often 0. And we change our x maximum value to 800. And we see that our units on the x-axis are 100 apart. So we're going to change our x scale to 100. Now on the y-axis, we're going to set our value to 0, just like on the original graph. And the maximum value of y is going to be 16. And then our y scale is going to be two units apart, so we're going to set y scale to two. 
And when we do that in graph, this is what it looks like. And this has the, the grid lines, the grid dots. And I was able to determine that the equation for this relationship is negative 0.02x plus 15. And so when we enter that and graph it, this is what it looks like. And you can see that it's a very good match of what the original graph is. Now we're going to take one that's fairly complicated. And this is from the Centers of D Disease Control Height versus Age Correlation uh, for 2 to 20-year-old boys. And